So bye everybody, welcome back to the channel. We finally have it, the Android 11 update to our OnePlus Nord. This device is less than a year old since it was released last year. And of course, we've always been waiting for Android 11. We finally have it. This is TK. Let's go ahead and check out the OnePlus Nord Android 11 update to Oxygen OS 11. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. Now this is the OnePlus Nord, uh, the one that came out first, not the OnePlus N10 or the N100. Those have not received the update yet. Uh, and as far as I understand it, it's a staged rollout. There's a couple of methods that we're able to download it. Uh, but for me, it's pretty much ready to basically restart my device and install it. So if we go here directly into the uh, about, I go to about phone. We're still running Android 10.0, obviously the OnePlus Nord, Snapdragon 765, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage. We have the 48 megapixel primary shooter, plus an 8, a 5, and a 2 megapixel quad camera setup on the back. And of course, that 32, 32 plus 8 megapixel front-facing camera on the front on here as we have that dual camera sensor, of course. 90 hertz, 6.4 inch uh, fluid AMOLED display, as always. And last but not least, of course, it's ready to go to Android 11. So let's go ahead and restart. Now, once we have everything kind of set up correctly, uh, just for the most part, your Google feed is still sitting on the left. You have the ability of going into your apps, swiping up takes you directly into the app drawer. All the information and everything stays the same, delete history. And of course, if we do that nice little swipe from the side here, we have access to the hidden spares. So that's something to keep in mind if you actually are using it. Uh, the customization as far as the actual launcher, wallpapers, widget, and home screen or home settings. So basically, uh, add icon to home screen, swipe down action by default is set to be shelf. I turned it off and set it up to be just open up notifications. You can go, of course, turn on double tap to lock, launcher layout if you want to be able to change the, cons uh, the configuration that you have in there. All of that stuff is there. A quick search gesture. Now you can t turn it on by swipe up and hold to turn it on or swipe up and basically it'll turn on this quick search for the apps. So it's nice with the system as opposed to just having the swipe up and getting into directly into the app drawer. Um, icon packs can be customized as usual. You have oxygen, hydrogen, and of course I have viral installed as well. I'm still using oxygen. And of course the home screen layout as far as the grid size, you can go all the way to six by six and of course customize the size of your icons. A hidden space can also be configured there. And of course, this is just the about the launcher itself. Now, some of the main changes that we know happened with Android 11 over with other uh, OnePlus devices is that the settings tab kind of changing itself. So we'll go ahead and swipe up away. We'll notice here we have a couple of more options. So a dark mode in there, the icon pack changed a little bit. I'll go into the settings and we have the new UI for the settings tab directly within OnePlus Nord. So all of the settings that we had in the past are still here. They're just categorized slightly differently. We have customizations that give us the ability of using Canvas. Now that's going to be able to allow us to use uh, taking an image and creating it uh, almost like what is essentially an always on display with our own image. So like taking into pictures like this and then we'll go ahead and hit the preview, give it a second to analyze. And this is going to give us the ability of using that function as an always on display. So I'll give it a second to finish there. And then now next time I'm able to turn it on, I'll go ahead and hit the play. And it's basically going to just fade in from an always on outline of my face directly into the lock screen. And then from there on, when I unlock my device, it'll take us straight into the home screen with that as a wallpaper. So you can definitely see it looks really, really nice and you can activate it. Uh, and this obviously does require ambient display. So always on display now is present. And you can see right there. I'll go ahead and turn it off. I'll give it a second. Give it a second here. So you'll notice here's the outline. Um, I'll unlock the device and the transition looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, of course, I probably will go back and use Dragon Ball, but for now, this is how it looks. Now, we also have the ability of using Alexa as the assistant here. If you'd like to set that up, it's not set up by default. I still use the Google Assistant by just swiping in from the bottom, and that gives me access to the Google Assistant on the system here. We still have, obviously, the ability of turning on dark mode, and of course, uh, we still have the 90 hertz refresh rate here. Um, under the actual system itself, let's go ahead and check about phone. You'll notice that obviously all of the information stays the same. We now actually have Android 11. So we can go ahead and just do this and we'll do one. And of course we have Android 11 with the nice little Easter egg. Uh, gesture support works pretty much the way you expected. Everything else actually kind of just stays the same. Uh, 90 Hertz, 6.4 inch fluid AMOLED display. Uh, gaming mode, of course, all of that stuff kind of comes in with it. OnePlus switches in there, pocket mode, scheduler. App Locker, Parallel Apps is in there as well, and Quick Launcher. Uh, that gives us the ability of using the fingerprint sensor to launch functional things. So an example would be here. If I lock the device, press and hold and keep my finger on it, you notice I actually have a few other options here. I have Instagram, I have Twitter, and I'm able to actually kind of go between even the ability of taking a voice search. So all of these things work great. I'll give it a second, launches there. 
and you're able to customize it there and just go in there and turn it on. So quick launches under utilities, very, very nice. Now under system, we have the ability of checking system update, RAM boost, multi-user if you want to be able to use that as well, experience program if you want to turn that on, OTG, resetting options, backup, uh, date and time language, and of course accessibility. Now the power menu has also been updated uh, and you still need to remember that pressing and holding the power button will launch your assistant. One of the other optimizations that we have here is the ability of going into the power menu or the shutdown menu. But you need to remember pushing and holding on the power button doesn't do that by itself. You need to do volume up and power and that gives you access to the new power menu. So Google Pay is present there, home control is in there as well, emergency, auto power, and of course, restart are all present there. You need to download the Google Home application to get this customization turned on. Once you have it installed, you'll be able to access it. And of course, Google Pay, same thing. You install it, activate it, uh, add your credit card into it, and you'll be able to start using NFC to make your payment. Now in the Recents app, we have the ability of seeing the different little shortcuts options here. And of course, we have the ability of actually pressing in and locking different applications. And locking them just for reference will keep them running in memory. So even if you recently turn on and clear all, by default, normally when you do this, all of the applications close. So I'll go ahead and bring that in. Instagram for me is locked and you'll also notice that Twitter as well as Telegram are all set up for me and I have them locked so that they stay in memory. So even if I hit the clear all, those stay in there and they'll always launch very, very fast. So reduces the uh, the latency of launching applications and it makes it very nice. Now, all of the customizations are obviously going to be here. Um, eye contact, font, system icons. Those are the things that you notice right there at the top. I have them set up to be red, but let's say I want to go into the circle form. I'll just go ahead and hit save, give it a second. And once it comes back down again, you'll notice there are more circle form. You can customize their accent colors. By default, it comes with the white and red. If I want to be able to go to a little bit more blue, I'll go ahead and hit save. And at that point, all my icons will start showing up with the blue color. It takes a second to kick in. Keep in mind, this is the 765G. So it's not as fast as the 888 or the 865. Uh, and of course, it's a fresh install. Uh, canvas is installed, wallpaper always on display, the ability of customizing our fingerprint uh, animation, horizon light is in there. A lot of these things we've seen in the past with the customization options. But definitely the new UI in the settings tab, all the optimizations of Android 11, and of course the ability of using the new power menu is definitely very nice. Uh, gaming mode and fanatic mode are also of course in here as well as Zen mode. Uh, so a lot of the things that you normally have seen and experienced in the past. So Zen mode in there, hotspot, uh, reading mode, of course. And of course, the ability of turning on fanatic mode or pro gaming mode is what they're calling it here. Uh, in the system, you're able to turn it on, gaming tools, hide games, show guide game icons, everything else that you have in there. Uh, mis uh, mistouch prevention, of course, gaming optimization, and fanatic mode is sitting here at the bottom. You can turn it on, use it, it features the, uh, obviously the advanced DND, enhanced progress regulator, of course, and network enhancement. Um, all pleasant, all easy to use, but by far one of the best features obviously is the always on display and the ability of actually using it and using the shortcuts that come within this uh, fingerprint sensor and, and making sure that we also have access to the new power menu. It is very exciting to see the OnePlus Nord line of devices to start receiving Android 11 stable release. Now this is a stable OTA over the air update. Now, if you're not wanting to wait for the OTA to show up to your smartphone, it is being released as a staged release. So typical to what OnePlus normally does, they don't release it in every region at the same time. But at some point or another, you should be able to see a new update to your smartphone showing the January 1st security patch update with Android 11 for our OnePlus Nord. Uh, for me, I did check the OnePlus Nord N10 and N100. Both did not receive it. But because we're starting to see it on the Nord line, more than likely it's just a matter of time before we start seeing Android 11 on the other smartphones released under the Nord. Uh, I would say the OnePlus Nord, so basically Nord by OnePlus, uh, the best way for me to describe it. Uh, very nice, very exciting, always on display is definitely very much appreciated to have it there. Canvas is in there built in, uh, the new power menu, all the new optimizations, and of course, uh, everything just makes this device even more compelling to get. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Android 11 Oxygen OS 11 update to our OnePlus Nord? Do you have it? Are you still waiting for it? Or were you going to basically try the OnePlus updater directly from the Play Store and get it installed as soon as possible? This is TK. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.